Minnesota Synod. Um, but we're going to wait about two more minutes. We usually uh, give people five. I'm Bill Tesh, and I'm your bishop, and I have been for three and a half years now. Doesn't seem possible, but uh, um, and it's been uh, it's been a delight to serve as your bishop, and I have an outstanding staff who are some of who are here with us tonight. So I'm going to ask you to go next, Chris. Hello, I'm Chris Dernier. You'll get some emails from me. You probably already have. That's why you're here tonight. I get to be the director of communications, events, and youth ministry for our synod. And I just appreciate um, the work that you do in your congregation. It's so important. Thank you. I'm Pastor Rebel. I am Pastor Rebel, and I'm your director for Evangelical Mission. I'm saying this in such a sing song. I feel like I should say, welcome to the ship. Come on in. Have a good day. Um, we're really happy that you're here, and we want you to always be here. So make sure you come back to these so we can learn how it's going for you, especially you new folks. Pastor Janelle. Hello, everyone. I am over in Bemidji, Minnesota, living on the other side of the Synod, and um, I am new to staff that I've been in, in a year, um, but it's been a joy, and um, I am assistant to the bishop, so try to speak with one voice with him. Thanks, Janelle. Uh, let's see, Bonnie, would you go next? Bonnie Angen from in Janelle's neck of the woods. I'm from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Clearbrook, Minnesota. Okay. And just got reelected to president last night or Monday night. So here I am again for one more year. Must be doing something. Then I'm done. I have done six years and I will be done. So it's going to be, we got to accomplish lots this year. Good. Yes. Tara, will you go next? Certainly. I'm Tara Iverson from Trinity Lutheran Church in Moorhead. I just became the council president here, though I've been on council for five years now. Uh, in my day job, I am an assistant United States attorney in Fargo. Thank you, Tara. Sharon. Uh, I'll learn, I don't Zoom very often. I also am in my sixth year on council, first year as president. And so after this year, I have vacation, I guess. Um, it's been fun being on council. I, I'm just turned 82, so it's, it's like I, I bring the senior perspective to the council. Thank you, Sharon. Mike. Yeah, I just uh, got elected as chair at Esther Lutheran in rural Parker's Prairie. I've been on uh, two years. This will be my third year and probably going to have to do three more after this. Um, I know the meeting I got elected on was kind of like herding cats. I hope to change that and give a direction to it, but we'll see how this works. Thanks a lot, Mike. Be uh, we'll... We won't talk about it today, but we have a best practices for congregational meetings uh, in our resources portion of our website. So if that can be helpful in the future, that'd be great. Uh, Leola, uh, your turn. Hi, I'm uh, Leola Olson at, from Trinity Lutheran Church in Detroit Lakes. And I am actually the outgoing president. Um, we are having our meeting where we will elect new officers on Tuesday night. But uh, since we didn't know who the president was, I thought I better attend here and take some notes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Carol, um, if you would unmute and introduce yourself. Are you there, Carol? All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead with uh, devotion and I'm gonna assume Carol's either reaching for the for the mute or maybe has uh, stepped out for a bit, but I just realized I don't have very good light here and my eyes aren't what they used to be. So bear with me. 
This is a resource called the Daily Text. It's put out by the Moravian Church, actually by Mount Carmel Ministries right here um, in the Alexandria area of our synod. Um, it has Lutheran roots and also Moravian roots, both. Um, it's a beautiful little resource that has text for every day of the year and prayer resources and hymn, hymns to sing on Sunday. Um, we made it available to all of our rostered ministers as a gift this Christmas. Um, and uh, um, that was that came from my bishop's discretionary fund, which is funded by generous people who think the bishop should have a discussion, a small discretionary fund. So I used it for a gift. Got a little message from me uh, at the beginning. It was printed just for our synod. And then uh, Trinity Lutheran uh, in Moorhead mailed them out for us because we didn't have our own ma uh, mailing um, uh, uh, what do you not for profit mailing. bulk mailing bulk mailing that's it so um they mailed them out for us and that was made it much more affordable for the mailing so we're, we're grateful for that but it's the resource uh uses just two short texts one from the old testament one from the new and then a prayer and then there's there's some further suggestions in it about how you can you know sort of expand your devotional time beyond those two short texts and prayer and one of them is called the TRIP method, which is an acronym, which means Thanksgiving, Regret, Intercession, and Plan. And I'm going to share these texts and then just share a little bit from utilizing the TRIP method, uh, some reflections on these texts. So the first one is from Jonah. I called to the Lord out of my distress, and the Lord answered me. And again. I called to the Lord out of my distress, and the Lord answered me. And then from Luke's gospel, Jesus said, Even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. And again, Even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. So when I read these texts, I am, and I, I'm prompted to be thankful for a fact that has been true in my life, which is that God has been faithful to me. God has indeed answered me in times of distress and um, has proven time and time and again that I need not be afraid. Um, I will confess, I will admit that sometimes it seemed as though God was waiting a little longer than I wanted God to wait. <laughs> um, and sometimes the answer came in a way that I had not imagined, but it always, always was faithful and always in a way that in the end I realized was better. And uh, what I um, regret is that I don't always remember that, that sometimes I pray in desperation, not sure that my prayer will be answered, um, sometimes I, I get anxious rather than rest in the confidence that God is always faithful and always has been. So my intercession, my prayer is that I will continue to remember. In fact, I, I did this devotion earlier for our rostered ministers, and I was in the garage in between meetings working on my snowmobile, and I lost a part on the floor somewhere, and I said a little prayer, and I was ready to just give up and go buy a new part. And I said, no, the part is here. <laughs> and I found it. So um, I don't know if God cares about snowmobiles, but I found the part, so I'm happy. Um, but I, my, my inner, my, it's my prayer is that I will remember that God is always faithful and to, and to rest in that. And then my plan is to, is to share that with someone. And I had opportunity to do that earlier today, and I'm going to do it again tonight. Uh, when I when I finally get a chance to spend some time with my spouse. So here's a prayer. Thank you, Lord, that even when we lose our hair, we can count on you to still know us. Forgive us for re recounting all that causes us stress in, in, in our distress. We disconnect from you when we are distressed. 
Teach us to keep calm by resting in you. Let us be still, knowing that we are known and loved. Amen. All right. So I'm just going to look at our agenda real quick here. So I want to um, begin with some, um, with a big thank you. Um, we do, we can, so um, we just finished our Giving Hearts Day and we had a very successful Giving Hearts Day. We raised 25, over $25,000, which was our goal. And uh, that will therefore be matched by the Offit Family Foundation. So um, we have an additional $50,000 now. These are for our strategic initiatives. So just a couple of things. There's about five different initiatives and if I cover them all, we won't get to the rest of the things on our agenda. But one of them is that we help pay down the seminary indebtedness for, for our pastors who have, um, who are carrying a burden of, of financial debt from their cost of their seminary education. And uh, we just keep, we are able to give uh, an annual uh, grant of a little over $4,000 a year to people who apply for that. And we've had many ministers now who've been able to pay their debts off thanks to this program. And this, this helps us a lot as a synod because it allows our pastors to serve where they feel called and not where the salary is the highest. And it allows our, um, our, our pastors to not be weighed down with the stress of, of carrying a heavy load of debt. And so we're gonna keep working at that. Uh, another piece that we've raised funds for is a project called Jeremiah 29. In Jeremiah 29 is where the prophet God, through the prophet Jeremiah, says to the exiles who are being exiled from the, from the promised land to Babylon, says to them um, to, uh, to, to make a home in the promised land and to work for the good of the city where they've been placed. And that occurred to us that this is exactly what God wants our, our rostered ministers to do as well, to make a home in those communities and work, a, work for the good of the communities where they're placed. And so Jeremiah 29, we have uh, in the first cohort, which just opened, just started, we have 10 uh, pastors from all around the synod um, in small communities, a few larger communities, um, rural areas, lakes country, who are learning the skills of community development and community organizing and entrepreneurship and spiritual practice. And they, they have a coach, an executive coach, so that they can work together for the good for some project, some, some big project that benefits the community where they serve. It might be something like opening a food co-op or grocery store or reopening the bowling alley that closed a few years back or whatever it is that the community needs. So we're really excited about that. And then the generosity also makes it possible for us to give a small grant to those congregations when their pastor comes to the end and they're ready to launch their project. So that's just a couple of examples of the things that we're able to do because of people's generosity through Giving Hearts and Minnesota Gives. And so thank you for any part you played in that. And if you didn't have an opportunity to give, that's fine. There will be an opportunity next year. All of this is over and above mission support, which is the, that's the, those are the, the percentage of your general offering that your congregation sends in each year. And it's usually decided at an annual meeting. Mission support covers the, really the, the things that we are required to do. The 75% of our time is constitutionally mandated working with congregations in the call process, congregations in conflict, when rostered ministers get in trouble, which happens rarely, but it does happen and uh, it requires a lot of time, um, working with uh, our candidates for ministry and helping them navigate uh, seminary and first call. And then of course, um, sharing resources with new ministries like our new congregation, um, emerge a new uh, worshiping community among people struggling with homelessness in the Moorhead area, a new worshiping community among 
our um, young adults among Gen X and Gen Y, emerging generations in the Bemidji area, just to name just a few of the ways in which that mission support makes a difference. So that I know you all participated in because um, that's, uh, that's just a part of your, how we live together as church. So thanks for that too. But the agenda item was to say, thank you for giving hearts. And so thank you. We met our goal. Thanks a lot. Um, let's see. Next is the Great Synod Get Together. By the way, if you have questions, just stop me. Or uh, you can also put them in the, in the uh, chat. Or you can just come off mute and ask your question. And if there's a question you came with, um, we'll pause right after the great Minnesota Synod get together and uh, we'll allow for any questions that you might have come with this evening. So next on the agenda is some conversation around our great Northwestern Minnesota Synod get together. So we, we just completely stole this trademark from the, from the uh, Minnesota State Fair and so far they haven't sued us. So we're really happy about that. Um, we had a very successful first annual one last year, was well attended, it took place here in Detroit Lakes, um, and we had folks from all across the Synod gather. So this year it will be in Bemidji um, on uh, March 18th, and uh, we will have um, leaders from hopefully every congregation in our Synod. This is an opportunity for in-person worship together as a Synod for workshops. We're going to have workshops on faith practice and um, adaptive leadership, which is so important these days, and emotional intelligence and coaching and telling uh, coaching and the value of coaching and, and not only for, for rostered ministers, but for everyone, and also um, telling our faith story. Dr. Andy Root, who's a well-known speaker and professor, will be our keynote speaker. And we will also be holding our conference assemblies on that day. So a very full day. So the, who should come to this? Well, you should. Uh, presidents should, for sure. Along with your folks who have been elected to serve as voting members at Synod Assembly. Because this event is a complement to our Synod Assembly. Our assemblies in the last two years, and again now this year, have been really focused on just doing the business. Just passing a budget, doing elections, have a short worship service. You know, we accomplish the business of the Synod. The great Northwestern Minnesota Synod get together it, uh, offers opportunities for resourcing and fellowship and connectivity and is a complement to that. And also because we have the conference assemblies on that day, that's, that's why we really need and want the voting members uh, who were elected for to go to Senate Assembly there, because that is a role of the voting members for Senate Assembly to also attend conference assemblies. So anybody can come. I believe that any anybody in your congregation or on your council who uh, you who uh, um, is interested in leadership in the church or you would like to cultivate as a leader. Um, this is a great event for them. It's going to be inspiring and equipping. So I hope you'll come. So I'll just pause and ask if there's any questions about this or anything at all before we move on. Question. Um, sure. What is the date and location of the Synod gathering? I think I maybe saw the date somewhere, but do we know where that will be? For the for the assembly. Synod assembly, you mean for the yes. assembly? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Why don't you go ahead? So our synod assembly is Saturday, June third. We're having it at four locations. Um, some of the feedback that we got um was people miss being together, but they also liked not having a a far drive and having to get a hotel room. Um, so our four locations are going to be Calvary Lutheran Church in Bemidji, um, Our Savior's Lutheran Church in East Grand Forks, Good Shepherd in Moorhead, and Bethlehem Lutheran in Fergus Falls. Um, according to Google Maps, no one should have to drive more than two hours. 
Um, and uh, um, it will be a great time. It will be mostly streamed from Moorhead, um, but there will be some other pieces out of other locations. Um, there won't be electronic voting. There'll be the cards that from when we were all together, uh, we will have those. And uh, trying to think of what other important things. We will that, have worship. Yeah, we will have, we have worship. Have, and worship. Our, our kind of our theme focus is the same as the Minnesota get together. It's telling the old, old story for a strange new time. And so this first, the, the get together focuses on probably more ministry with adults and the assembly is really focused on ministry with uh, first third of life. So we have a keynote um, who's an expert. Who's the keynote again, Chris? Kara Powell. Right, right. Kara Powell. Yep. Who's um, written, co-written a lot of books, especially growing young. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's been a key focus with the ELCA. And then our churchwide representative is also um, Daniel Bodwin or Daniel uh, Kirschbaum. Kirschbaum. Yeah. Daniel Bodwin is a bishop in a different city. Daniel Kirschbaum um, is the works with uh, First Third of Life. So the young uh, adult program. Can I say just a few things here? I'm yes. on a break because our consul is here, ready yep. to meet. So hopefully this isn't always going to be on the third Thursday. Because Not necessarily, I'm, but your okay. council is welcome to participate too. Baron, are they, are they sitting at the table with you? Uh, they are starting to. Yeah. Can you can you spin your screen around so that we can wave at them? Why don't you guys come behind me? <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Rick. Hi there. Dave. Hello. Good to and see Pastor you. Dell. Hey there. Hey. <laughs> I so, thank you. Well, well, blessings on your meeting. God is coming. Thank you. And I hope to be at the next meeting. All and right. Sharon, we are recording this. And so I will send you a link um, oh, to the awesome. recording. So you'll be able to see all the things that you are, um, that you're missing as you're sending to your phone. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. Well, that was a long explanation, but um, did, did we answer your question, Tara? Okay. Um, let's move on to constitutions, Janelle. Yes, so if you um, are a congregation that would like to update your co church constitution, uh, we encourage that just so that you have good order in your own uh, faith communities. Um, constitutions really matter uh, when you are in trouble. Uh, so um, we don't want to just wait until you're in trouble to update it. We'd like to have it for good order now. So Chris is showing you the website. Um, we have a constitution review team that will help you from day one. So if you say, yes, we'd like some help, we will sign you in a partner. Um, and we have a few more faces than just here on um, the screen. Uh, and um, they will help you get through. Uh, the link here that Chris is showing you on number um, one and two are um, live links that you can get the model constitution. Um, and that is what you can use to start updating yours. It has a lot of updated language uh, to, about the rostered ministers uh, changes and, and things um, that will help guide you in your faith communities. And again, we're here to partner with you, um, and there's a timeline and a process that we can help with. So if uh, that is something under your presidency that will be on the docket this year, know that um, you can contact me and I'll assign you a helper to walk through it. Any questions about that? Um, Janelle, I have a question. Are you, yeah, does, does the Senate recommend that you review it? Um, we, we look at our constitution every year but um, are you recommending, because I'm, I'm sure our language isn't 2022 language. <laughs> um, are, we, are you recommending we update it every five years or something just to get it up to the right language or? It's every you know, three, Bonnie. So every time there's a church-wide assembly, we, um, 
they have really smart people who look at these uh, lawyers and people who know church that give us the recommended updates. And that is why the model constitution that Chris showed you on the screen was 2022. We just had a churchwide assembly last summer. So if you guys look at it every year, you can look at the 22 version. So usually it's every about three years, there'll be new recommendations. Okay. Thanks for that question. Yep. All right. Well, the next thing is really about governance. And, and I just want to, rather than um, go into a lot of details about governance, I really just want to share some resources. Chris, can you give me sharing capabilities? All right. Let me just uh, get over to the page here. Yeah, so um, this first one is uh, on the ELCA website. Um, there it is. So hopefully you're seeing this. Are you seeing that? Okay. Well, this is uh, on the ELCA website. If you just go to, uh, let's see, how did I get here? To the ELCA resources, which is pretty easy to find. Um, you can, uh, um, you'll, if you go to just resources, you'll have congregational resources, financial resources. So on this page is just a lot of resources for finances, um, like, you know, an automobile reimbursement policy form, um, and, a, you know, a, a countable reimbursement form, um, Things like uh, how to do a pastor's W-2, that's unique. Um, how to acknowledge in-kind gifts, you know, just a variety of really, you know, some things that come up in financial life. And then let's see, did, did that page just shift for you? Are you seeing the office of the secretary now? Okay. So here we have things related to insurance and risk management, which is an important area for you to review every year, your your insurance policy and where you're at. But there's a lot of other things here, like, you know, um, training for an active shooter event, right? Um, how to think about um, disasters and uh, disaster planning, um, emergency preparedness, how to handle an embezzlement. Um, sadly, those things happen. Um, and so um, lots of good resources here. And then there's a legal issues page, and we've got um, legal sections for employees and volunteers, some sample policies, some, some policies around property, sexual misconduct prevention, and taxes. So there's just, I uh, wanted you to know that the ELCA webpage is an outstanding resource for you uh, as you think about proper governance. governance. Now, in these quarterly meetings, we will cover governance and, and specific issues, especially as they are timely for the time of year we're in. And the big one being, of course, as we come to year end and we look at annual meetings, and we'll share more information then. But mostly, I just wanted to lift up this res these resources to you. So, um, I have a question on that. Do you ever do an orientation for secretarial staff? You mean for like, uh, not for the elected secretary, but for like secretary staff? Of a, of we, a parish? We, we do not, but thank you for that suggestion. It's something we can certainly talk through. We, I can think of a lot of people who would be great resources for that, folks who do that work really well and have been doing it for a long time. Well, and I'm, I'm even thinking just to orient them to the, all those resources that are available so they're not creating documents for their own churches um, right, where right. you already have them in PDF form and I'll forget what they all were <laughs> by the time I talk to her again. Yeah, well, if you just let her know that there are those resources on the ELCA website, she can probably find them there. And if not, she can give us a call and we can help her. Yep, thank you. You bet. So let's see, I think what's next is uh, some Lenten resources, Pastor Janelle. 
Yes. So I would say um, if you're a congregation or if one of your neighboring congregations are without pastors right now, we uh, really feel like we wanted to help support some congregations. And so one of the Lenten resources, there's actually a few options that Chris has um, that she can show you on our website. Um, one is Lent in a Box, and um, that is the resource through Church and New. Uh, that um, has some options. There are two services, two um, different um, options for you here. And uh, they're just a wonderful gift. And if you already have Lent planned, uh, you might want to look at this resource or have your worship teams work, look at this resource to pack away for another time. Really well done. Um, we gave them the feedback that this is coming a little late. Some congregations already have their Lent planned, but uh, still want to be in partnership with, with Church Anew and St. Olaf and Concordia. The other resource I'd really like to highlight is um, uh, goes along with our Spring Appeal, and it is about creation care. And these are seven, um, they're actually eight videos. There's a beautiful introductory video done by our good friends in Detroit Lakes. Um, and then there are seven, seven minute devotionals uh, that um, uh, are all here uh, that you can use. Uh, there's also manuscripts that can be read if video is not a, a great way to get to your congregation. Um, and then there's a, a question that you can turn to a neighbor and ponder together about uh, care of the earth. And so um, you can use that during Lent midweeks. You could use it on Sunday mornings for a supplement. You could use it for an adult education class. You could use it in the spring and Easter uh, during um, uh, Sunday or Wednesday worship. Um, it, it is yours to use. Some congregations have said we're going to use one. Um, uh, and we they have a preacher three uh, three weeks out of the month and the fourth Sunday they're going to use it then. So really, this is for you to use however you'd like to um, as a resource. And again, it ha has to do for the beauty of the earth and in dealing with creation care uh, topics. So we hope that you find that as a great resource that you can pass on to your worship teams and use as needed. And then open the slide after yeah, for those of you who need pulpit supply, we are um, updating that on our website. And the good news is we've gotten people who are interested in doing it. Uh, there will be an application on our website soon that will come up that will just give us a little information about yourself and why you'd be interested in filling uh, pulpit supply. And then for congregations, there'll be a resource there too for um, how uh, they can get in touch with these folks. Um, so again, on our front page of the website, Chris is showing you Pulpit Supply. Um, we will uh, have an application for those who are interested as well as um, a supply list. And we have, uh, have um, organized them around conferences. So you kind of know within driving distance what who would possibly be um, somebody that you could call on your list too. And if anyone says, well, um, could um, Ron Church preach for us this weekend? Um, uh, you, you can find your own people. They don't have to necessarily be approved by us. Um, if you know somebody, you trust somebody that is going to give a lay testimony or uh, um, something like that, that's fine. This is really for, we don't know anybody and we would like somebody in here. We have a conversation with them. We would love to train everybody, equip everyone uh, who feels called to being a lay preacher. So to be in touch with us, we recommend. Um, and uh, and on that form, it will also specify if they're just interested in preaching or if they're interested in doing more, like presiding over the sacraments or something like that, then we need to have, make sure that they're trained and feel comfortable doing that in your site. So again, we want to partner with you. Uh, we want to make sure that your congregations are um, places that are having great wor worship leadership and uh, that we can resource them and equip them the best we can. So that Pulpit Supply what website will have a little update here soon as we get that um, information out to you. Thank you, Pastor Janelle. So I just put in the chat something that you can copy for a, um, a resource. And what it is, is a spiritual gifts assessment tool. So I recommend that as presidents that you take 
this assessment and it is very short, it is free, it is very easy and learn a little bit about yourself and then maybe um, you can copy this and put it in your on your desktop or wherever and you can send it to folks that you are doing ministry with. So maybe the rest of your council, maybe you are helping to lead other groups maybe you want your sunday school teachers to be able to try this assessment so that they can learn where their gifts are and so that they can work better with the rest of the team and so use this however you might want to um, both chris and i took it and it was very fast and we did find it to be very accurate and um, really speaks to the different roles that we play on the synod team and so please use that if you can the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is stewardship opportunities. This is the most common question that I get over and over and over again. And so Chris is going to pull up our stewardship page, and this can be found on our website. If you go to resources and then click on stewardship and so, the me, first one, here, um, sorry to break in, but yeah. So there's the ELCA website, which is the churchwide organization's website that I showed you. And then there's our website, which is our Northwestern Minnesota Synod website. That's what we're referring to now. Yes, Just thanks for that clarify. clarification. Yeah, it can get really confusing. And um, speaking of that, we were really confused about this stewardship page earlier today, but Chris went in and, and fixed it all up. And so you all don't have to fight through that. And so we're actually gonna talk about number six first, Chris. Number six is a brand new, brand new within uh, 10 days resource newsletter for you to go and click on that link and sign up to receive a newsletter called Where Your Heart Is. And um, I would love you to do that. I would love you to share that if you have a stewardship team, if you have anyone in your uh, church that has any questions about stewardship, what can we be doing? This has some really great um, on the spot things that you can go through. Not only does it have resources, but it has different opportunities for you to dig in deeper. It has some really good biblical connection between who we are as people of God and why does this generosity and stewardship thing actually matter in our faith practices and in our lives. It's more than simply putting a check in a um, in a basket or online. It is deeper than that. It certainly is more about us being um, community together as the children of God. So that's the first one. The second one is number three, Chris, and it is called Cultivating Generous Congregations. Last fall, we had six congregations go through this program. It is uh, more expensive than the average ones, but apparently it is wonderful. So we heard back from every single group that went through it, that they gained knowledge, that they learned how to work together, that they had um, different folks in the group that were more comfortable talking about different things. Some folks were really, really right on the electronic giving and others really wanted to put an envelope in people's hands. Some people wanted to do um, the, the questions and the conversations around spiritual um, care in different areas because this does talk about stewardship of voice, stewardship of land, stewardship of resources, stewardship, all of all of the different kinds of stewardships. And so it could connect deeply. If you are interested in this, please give me a call or email me and I will talk you through it. And it does require me to sign you up and recommend you. Number seven, Chris, is um, a webinar that our synod participated in with a few other synods and it is chock full of good stuff so if you have 50 minutes and you want to sit down and look at this recording of the webinar from february 1st elca resources from lake institute bishop and i are taking a class from the person that presented at this and there is some good information Finally, on that list that you will see the rest of number seven, you will notice that there are different resources. We will try to update those on a very regular basis, and we hope that um, you find something useful. The book that is there that Chris was just pointing at is brand new, and 
um, is being used quite a bit in several different groups in the ELCA, and they are finding that helpful. So does anyone have any questions about what I just talked about there? No. Okay. Well, I will move on to my final thing, and that is a digital ministry grant. You may or may not know that you as presidents serving congregations of different sizes likely have very different digital ministry um, that you put out into the world. And so this is specifically for folks who want to promote electronic giving in your congregation, encourage digital ministry creativity, and help fulfill our mission of the ELCA to reach new, young, and diverse people, being absolutely creative, stepping something, stepping into something new for the name of Jesus Christ. So this grant application will open on March 1st and will close on April 15th. In a couple of days, I'm told Monday, I will get the rest of the details for this application and I will give it to Chris immediately and she will put it on the website. And so there will be three grants per synod. And oftentimes people think, oh, this is an ELCA thing. We're never gonna get any. Well, three different churches in our synod will get this grant. And so we wanna help you serve your communities the absolute best that you can and if this is a way that will make that happen for you in a better way, please step into this. We'll figure it out together and hopefully we'll have a very easy application. I am told and promised that it will be easy. So that is all for me. That's awesome, thank you. We had a very full agenda and it's our goal to give you, um, this has been our the first meeting we've had in a while and we'll have these meetings quarterly. And uh, we want to give you time to talk to each other. So we're going to put you into breakout rooms for the last uh, oh, 10 minutes here. And um, then we'll come back and have a prayer and a blessing at the end. But um, in your breakout room, we'll just be with each other because you're small enough. Uh, we're a small enough crowd here. But you might want to share. You can just share how it's going. Like, what are you excited about for your congregation? What are you concerned about? Um, you might also want to share what uh, you know, what questions or concerns you might have now serving as a president of a congregation. Um, so just some thoughts, or, or you can just get to know each other. Um, and uh, But those are some ideas about how you might share. So I'm going to open up the room here in a moment, and I'll... We'll do the 10 minutes and I'll close the breakout room. It'll give you a minute warning and we want to hear your questions and concerns so that we can make sure we tend to them and address them the best we can and we'll have a blessing. So don't, don't like run away, <laughs> stay with us. 